Hi guys, my name is Meredith and I work for the library. I am a children's librarian. I know I have seen many of you before and I wanted to tell you that I hope you had a really great summer. I hope you got outside and enjoyed the nice weather and I have a few books with me today uh, that I hope that you will take a look at. These are some awesome books. Some of them have been around for a little while. Some of them are newer. And these are books that you can find at our library if you go online and put them on hold. We're doing some curbside pickups right now. So all the books that you put on hold, you can drop by the library parking lot at a scheduled time and we will bring them right out to you. Some of these books are also available online. We have lots and lots of different ways to read things online. Um, we've got Overdrive. Sometimes you might use the app, which is called Libby. We also have a program called Hoopla. Hoopla sometimes has comics. They've got shows and movies also, and they've got eBooks and audiobooks. So I'm gonna show you guys some of these books, and if it is available online, I'll let you know. Um, but I want to start with the first one here. This is a book called All the Colors of Magic. I'm going to hold it up so you can see the cover here. It's really, really pretty. Um, you can see there's this girl on the cover and she's got this amazing hair that's like pink and red. And her name is Penelope. And Penelope is just like you. She's just like me. She's like any other person almost. So she has hair, but at the start of the book, her hair is all gray. It's just gray all the time. Um, she's not really sure why because she's only 10 years old. And, you know, she listens to her mom when her mom gives her instructions. Although sometimes she knows what her mom is going to say before her mom even says it. It's like she hears it in her brain before it actually comes out of her mom's mouth, which is very confusing to her mother. And last, you know, she loves her birthday, but on Penelope's birthday, it always rains. Always. And on top of that, Penelope seems to be the only one who realizes that when it rains on her birthday, the rain isn't wet. Really weird, right? Well, something happens to Penelope's mom. She takes a little tumble, and she ends up having to go to the hospital because she, she fell down a hill. And while Penelope's mom is getting better at the hospital, something very strange starts happening to her. She wakes up one morning and her hair is huge. And it is the color of a bonfire. And Penelope's grandmother, who's taking care of her, freaks out, just totally freaks out. And Penelope finds out that her mom and her grandmother have been hiding this little secret from her, which is that Penelope is actually magic. She has magic powers and her grandmother and mother have been, been doing their very, very best to prevent her magic powers from coming out, but they do. And it turns out that they're, they're scared because Penelope's father was killed in a magical accident. But Penelope wants to learn how to hone her powers, and she thinks if she does so, there might be a chance that her father is still out there somewhere. So this one is All the Colors of Magic. And the next one is also a magical book here. This is a new one called Starfell, Willow Moss, and the Lost Day. Yes, you heard that right. It's a lost day. And this is part of a series. So this is book one. And Willow lives in the village of Grinfell with her um, sisters and her mom, and they are all witches. Grinfell is kind of a magical village. Not every village is magical. In fact, Grinfell is one of the only villages where magic is permitted. Um, and uh, Willow's sisters have some pretty awesome powers. So like her sister Camille can like lift things up with her brain. So like she sees an object and she just like imagines it floating in the sky and then it does like she's using the force. And uh, her other sister Juniper can blow things up. So you would think that Willow had a pretty cool power, but Willow's power, Willow's power is finding things that have gotten lost. Um, which isn't particularly exciting. I mean, like, her sisters are kind of mean about it. 
Um, but the neighbors like it. Like, so every day Willow goes and she sits in her front yard on a chair. And all the neighbors come over to Willow's yard and they tell her about things that they lost. So they might say, do you know where I put my car keys? Or, um, I don't know where my homework is. And Willow always knows. Well, one day she's sitting out there on the lawn and suddenly the whole line of people that was waiting to hear from her, they all just scatter. They get up and they run away. And so Willow is like, what is going on? And this witch named Moreg Vane shows up. Now Moreg Vane is known for being an evil witch. She is not a good witch like Willow and her family. So Willow is feeling pretty concerned about why she might be at her house. And Moreg Vane, it turns out, isn't actually so evil. She's just very, very powerful. And she comes to Willow and says, I need your help. Last Tuesday has gone missing. So I don't know about you guys, but I've never encountered a missing day before. But when Willow thinks about it, like really thinks about it in her brain, she actually can't remember what she did last Tuesday. And neither can anybody else. And it's even like, it's like fading off the calendar even. And so Willow is like, okay, something is really, really weird here and something isn't so great. So she and Moore decide they're going to go figure out who took last Tuesday and how they're going to get it back. And also why? Why would somebody steal last Tuesday? Well, it turns out that not everybody likes magic. And there are some people out there who are dedicated to destroying it and removing it from the world forever. And they have done something with Last Tuesday, and you don't know why, but they're very close to succeeding in their plan. So this one is Starfell. And guess what, guys? This one is available on Hoopla on the library's website. So if you want to read this as an ebook, you can download the Hoopla app or go onto the library's website and look up Hoopla, and you can read this one online. Now next we have a new one from one of my favorite, favorite authors. This is from Pam Munoz Ryan, and it is called Manana Land. And Manana Land means Tomorrowland. That's what it means. Um, and Tomorrowland is about a boy named Max, and Max lives in a little village called Santa Maria with his papa and with his abuela, with his grandpa. And he is really wanting to go to soccer camp. Like really, really wanting to go to soccer camp. All of his friends are going. It's the summer. And his dad tells him, uh, I don't want you to go. You can't go. It doesn't really give a reason. And Max finds out that something really strange is going on with his birth certificate. He needs his birth certificate to be able to register for soccer camp, and it's nowhere in the house. And he can tell that his dad and his grandpa are keeping some sort of secret from him. And then his dad says, uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll go find it. I'm going to go find your birth certificate. We'll, we'll get you registered for soccer camp. And his dad disappears. And then he's gone for a week. And then he's gone for two weeks. And then it's almost been a month. And so something's really not right. And Max's grandpa tells him, you know the stories I've always told you about our village, about our country, about the magic that lives here. And Max has heard these stories, but you know, his dad was like, there's, there's nothing true about them. None of this ever really happened. Well, Max, Max's grandpa says it did. It all happened. And these stories are about two different groups of people. There are a group of people called the Hidden Ones. Nobody knows really what they are. If they're, they're refugees from another country, if they're ghosts, if they're thieves, if they're just innocent women and children, nobody knows who they are. And then there are people called Guardians. And the Guardians are special people who have secret maps and they use those maps to guide the Hidden Ones out of Santa Maria into a place called Manana Land. And Ma Max's abuelo says, all of this is true, and I have a secret about your father, 
and about your mother. And now Max is really listening because Max's mother disappeared a long time ago. Nobody knows where she went. His abuelo says, your whole family is guardians. And you, Max, you come from a long line of guardians. And Max does find out that the guardians are indeed the protectors of the hidden ones. And the hidden ones pass through Santa Maria on their way to safety. Well, not even like a day after Max finds this out, while his abuelo is off somewhere, a hidden one shows up at his house. It's a little girl and her kitten, and Max is told, oh, where's your father? Your father is supposed to take her to Manana land. And Max knows his father has kind of gone missing. And Max says, I'm a guardian. All my parents were guardians. My aunts and uncles are guardians. I'll take her to Manana land. I know the way. And he kind of sort of knows the way. So Max sets off with this little girl trying to get her to safety, all the while being pursued by people who want to steal this little girl back. So this is awesome. It's like a fantasy quest. Um, if you guys like adventure, this is a perfect one for you. And again, it is called Manana Land. And I'll tell you, I'm reading this one online too. This is a book I'm reading through our digital downloads um, or the Libby app. It's the same thing. And all you need is a library card and you can check this one out um, online as well. All right, guys, I've got one last one for you. It's a graphic novel. This series has been out for a while. It's called Mr. Wolf's Class. And this is the Mr. Wolf's Class Lucky Stars. And in this graphic novel, we see a couple of different pals. I'm gonna open it up here and show you. Margo and Samson. Samson's the frog, Margo's the bunny, and Samson has been put in charge of writing a personal narrative. Samson does not want to write a personal narrative. And he thinks, oh man, nothing's ever happened to me. I'm never going to have anything cool happen to me in my whole life. Um, but then Samson and Margo go bike riding, and Samson's like, hey, let's race down Chicken Hill. What do you think happens? They race their bikes down Chicken Hill. Yeah, nothing good happens. Samson breaks his arm. But this gives Samson a great idea. Now that he's broken his arm, he finally has a story to write about for his personal narrative. So if you guys like graphic novels, this one's called Mr. Wolf's Class. There are two others in this series right now. And I have to tell you that the, the author is um, one of my favorites. He's writing a fourth book and he has kind of a funny last name. His name is Aaron Nels Stanky. And he does all of this work himself. If you guys have ever wondered, like, how long does it take to draw a graphic novel? It takes a really, really long time. This is all drawn by hand. So I hope that you guys like some of these books. I hope that you'll come and visit us at the library and pick some of them up. We're always happy to take requests and to run them outside for you. And I hope that you have an awesome school year. I'll see you next time.